From the banks of Africa to the battlefields of Japan, a mysterious young man embarked on a fantastical journey as a slave and worked his way to the highest honor as a king's guard. Much is not known about who he was, but the little we know about who he came to be is a story of brotherhood, bloodshed, and betrayal. This is the story of Yasuke, the African Samurai. Legend has it that the Mozambicans were the first Africans to set foot on Japan, starting in 1546 with the help of the Portuguese during the Nanban trade. As an assistant to an Italian Jesuit missionary Alessandro Valignano, who had been appointed the visitor of the Jesuit missions in the Indies, a young African man would end up on the banks of Kyoto. Theories state that the man was from Mozambique, Sudan or even Ethiopia. However, the moment the man set foot on Japan in 1579, he instantly became the center of attraction to the local people. With rumors spreading like wildfire about a six-foot man covered in black ink, the locals would rush just to catch a glimpse of this African giant in the flesh. Japanese people at the time had not seen a black person before, especially one that was a foot taller than most of them. It is rumored that crowds broke down the doors of the Jesuit church and they were so intense that some individuals were crushed to death as they rushed in big numbers to see him. The fame of the man eventually garnered the attention of Oda Nobunaga, an important daimyo lord and one of the unifiers of Japan in a local church in 1581. Nobunaga, intrigued at what he saw, thought of the man to be a guardian demon or a god of prosperity based on the Buddhist statues at the time. Oda was convinced the man was painted black and ordered him to be stripped and scrubbed, but as expected, he realized the black man's skin to be real. Oda's astonishment at this African man was a nascent of a friendship, and hence the name Yasuke was given to him. Oda would eventually make Yasuke his bodyguard, providing Yasuke a home, some money, servants, and eventually a short katana, hence recruiting him as a samurai. Yasuke would be the first and only African samurai in the history of Japan. He was also the weapons bearer and would occasionally die with the daimyo something only a few trusted men were honored to partake in. History records express that Nobunaga viewed Yasuke to have the strength of 10 men with a 6 foot 2 frame and enjoyed conversing with Yasuke, learning about Africa and other stories about Yasuke's life prior to Japan. By 1582, Nobunaga was the most powerful warlord during the Sengoku era and Yasuke would serve in battles as Nobunaga aimed to unify all of Japan, like the Battle of Tenmokuza. Yasuke was said to be ferocious on the battlefield, accompanied by the warrior spirit which was admired by Nobunaga and other samurais that knew him. The conquest though would not last long as in June of that very year, Nobunaga would one day rest at the Honoji Temple while sending his armies to continue the military expansion of his empire. Yasuke would stay with Nobunaga at the temple, with most of the other men being artists and servants. Akechi Mitsuude, one of Nobunaga's trusted generals, was sent to aid another daimyo beyond Kyoto. Till today, it remains a mystery why, but Akechi Mitsuide, knowing how vulnerable Nobunaga was at the temple, seized this opportunity to betray Nobunaga, telling his men, the enemy awaits at Honoji. With an army of 30 men at his disposal, Yasuke led a desperate charge to protect Nobunaga against the marauding larger army of Mitsuide. This however was to no avail as the numbers advantage was solely on Mitsuide's side. Looking down the barrel of defeat, Nobunaga turned to seppuku, an honorable suicide to avoid capture and ultimate loss of power to his enemy. It is speculated that Nobunaga ordered Yasuke to take his head as a means of denying Mitsuide the legitimacy of power. With the temple ablaze, Yasuke escaped the ambush, riding to protect his former lord's heir. Oda Nobutada, who was not that far away. He would rally an army to counter Mitsuhide's advancement and commence a fierce battle against the traitor. But once again, Yasuke would be on the side of the much smaller losing army. Oda's son would also commit seppuku, and Yasuke would be captured and presented to Mitsuhide, since his men did not know what to do with him. Mitsuhide, who harbored contempt for Yasuke, regarded him as little more than an animal who did not deserve the honor of being killed. As a result, Mitsuhide banished Yasuke back to the church in Kyoto back to where he started in the foreign land. Though the shame of losing the samurai title may have stayed Yasuke for life, his former masters praised God for his return. This is where the story of Yasuke gets lost into history. Some say he may have died on the islands, while others speculated he returned to the motherland, or even performed seppuku on himself. However, one thing is for certain, the story of Yasuke, the only black samurai, is unique on its own, showing how what was meant to be bad can turn to be good, and even the humblest of beginnings can lead one to live a life of inspiration to others.